Okay, Shavu Tov. Chodesh Tov today was Shabbos Parshas Vayikra and Parshat HaChodesh and Rosh Chodesh. This is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So we learned last, uh, you know, last month was Chodesh Adar. Mishinichnas Adar Marbim B'Simchas. When Adar comes in, it's to be more joyous. What's the reason for that? Because it leads into the miracles of Purim and Pesach, Rashi says. So if you're joyous in Purim, you should be even more joyous in Nisan because the 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 awesome spiritual light that came in at the time of Yitziat Mitzrayim, the Exodus from Egypt, comes into the world every year. And we can be blessed with that light with both personal and national redemption and salvation if we if we want it. So it's with great anticipation that we look forward to Pesach. And everything that we do is for the sake of receiving the great gift that Hashem wants to give us on Pesach. So, and to really learn more about that, I want to share a second idea, uh, and that is a passage from Rabbi Soloveitchik's eulogy for the Talmud Rebetzin that Rabbi Krohn at the Young Israel uh, shared with us today. Uh, it was published originally in Tradition Magazine, a journal of Orthodox Jewish thought published by the Rabbinical Council of America in 1978, during the Rav's lifetime. It was a, it was a treasure that the Rav allowed this entire volume, pretty much, to consist of several essays that he composed. Um, and one of them is the tribute to the Talna Rebetzin. Who was the Rebetzin of Talon? She was the, she was the, the Rav's Machtenister. Her, his, his daughter, Dr. Atara Soloveitchik Chorsky, married Rabbi Dr. Isidore Chorsky, Yitzchak Chorsky, who was the Talna Rebbe, um, who in, had his, uh, the Talna Shul in, um, I think it's right over the border from Brookline in Brighton. And um, when Tom Rebetzin passed away rather early on, the Rav at the Shloshim gave a very beautiful hesped, a beautiful eulogy. And um, I just want to read a, sh a small part of it. And this was brought in today because of the discussion of why women have a special privilege and responsibility to Rosh Chodesh, why women get to celebrate Rosh Chodesh by not doing some basic um, malacha work activities that the men are not privileged to um, sign off on, like some women don't do laundry and so on, on Rosh Chodesh, um, and they can, they can go on strike on Rosh Chodesh from those things. So Rabbi Soloveitchik, uh, and, and so he's talking about the role of the Jewish mother, and um, this is a, a short piece that I'd like to share. People are mistaken in thinking that there is only one Masora only one tradition that's handed down, and one Masora community, the community of the fathers. It is not true. We have two Masorot, two traditions, two communities, two Shalshalot HaKabbalah, two chains of transmission. The Masora community of the fathers and that of the mothers. As before the Torah was given, Hashem said to Moshe, Kol tamar lebeit Yaakov, betageid levnei Yisrael. Go tell the house of Jacob, base Yaakov, that's the women, and tell the children of Israel, that's the men. Hear, my son, the instruction of your father, 
And forsake not the teaching of your mother, says King Solomon in Proverbs 1.8. Shema b'ni musar avicha v'al titosh torat imecha. There's musar avicha, the instruction of your father, and there's torat imecha, the Torah of your mother, the teaching of your mother. What is the difference between those two masorot, those two traditions? What is the distinction between Musar Avicha and Torah Timecha? Let us explore what one learns from the father and what one learns from the mother. One learns much from father. How to read a text, the Bible or the Talmud, how to comprehend, how to analyze, how to conceptualize how to classify, how to infer, how to apply, etc. One also learns from father what to do and what not to do, what is morally right and what is morally wrong. Father teaches the son the discipline of thought as well as the discipline of action. Father's tradition is an intellectual moral one. That is why it is identified with Musar, which is the biblical term for discipline. The Rav is obviously drawing very much on his own experience as a child, but it's very idealized. Um, he lived a very um, ideal and pure childhood. But what is Torah Imecha? What kind of a Torah does the mother pass on? I admit that I am not able to define precisely the Masoretic role of the Jewish mother. Only by circumscription I hope to be able to explain it. Permit me to draw upon my own experiences. I used to have long conversations with my mother. In fact, it was a monologue rather than a dialogue. She talked and I happened to overhear. What did she talk about? I must use a halachic term in order to answer this question. She talked mi'inyana diyoma, which literally means the topics of the day. But as a halachic term, it means, you know, like, when Rosh Hashanah comes, you talk about Rosh Hashanah. When Sukkot comes, you talk about Sukkot. When Pesach comes, you talk about Pesach. I used to watch her arranging the house in honor of a holiday. I used to see her recite prayers. I used to watch her recite the Sidra every Friday night. And I still remember the nostalgic tune. I learned from her very much. Most of all, I learned that Judaism expresses itself not only in formal compliance with the law, but also in a living experience. She taught me that there is a flavor, a scent, and warmth to mitzvahs. I learned from her the most important thing in life, to feel the presence of the Almighty and the gentle pressure of His hand resting upon my frail shoulders. The most important thing in life, to feel the presence of the Almighty and the gentle pressure of His hand resting upon my frail shoulders. Without her teachings, which quite often were transmitted to me in silence, I would have grown up a soulless being, dry and insensitive. The laws of Shabbat, for instance, were passed on to me by my father. They are a part of Musar Avicha. The Shabbat as a living entity, as a queen, was revealed to me by my mother. It is a part of Torah Imecha, the teaching of your mother, the Masora of your mother. The fathers knew much about Shabbat. The mothers lived the Shabbos, experienced her presence, and perceived her beauty and splendor. The fathers taught generations how to observe the Shabbos. Mothers taught generations how to greet the Shabbos and how to enjoy her 24-hour presence. May Hashem bless us that we live both Musar Avicha, everything, all the intellectual tradition, all the moral tradition, and that, you know, what might call the letter of the law, 
and that we absorb, imbibe, and, give, and live and express Torati Mecha, the, which one might call the, the soul, the, the spirit of the Torah, and integrate it and live it as a, a living life of Torah. Shavuot Tov and Chag Kasheh